200 prestige. It's moved me closer now to my goal of 1,000 prestige to become exalted among men. I'm also going to browse around who I'm going to give this title to. I'm not about to give the title to someone who's not loyal, but I'm going to give it to someone who will be loyal and who fits within the de jure borders of the, a duchy. I'm going to give it to this guy. He'll make a, he'll make a good duke. Alright, at least that problem solved. Let's see, how about the Duchy of Orleans? Valois, perhaps? Barry? Hmm. Maybe I'll hold off a little bit until the war is done. I don't have infinite cash, even if I can probably afford to fight this war. Nah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make a uh, make the Duchy of Barry. I'll give it to this guy I was just looking at. All right, that's another 200 some odd prestige. We're much closer now to my goal. That also makes him much more loyal. Giving bigger titles to vassals will always make them happier with you. Uh, duchies are worth a good 60 point increase in relations with someone when you give them. Not counting if you give them any other titles associated with the duchy. Oh, this guy's complaining. Now he can rot in prison for all I care. Uh, but that still doesn't mean you need to just go ahead and give duchies to just anybody, because while it is a 60-point increase, that's not going to make someone who hates you uh, like you. It's also not a good idea to give titles to people who have claims on you, because even if, the, even if they like you, if they have claims on you, uh, the AI might still decide to attack you, and they'll attack you now with their much bigger, fatter titles. Now, since I need money for making all these titles, I might as well ransom off all these guys I've captured. I don't need to keep them in prison any longer. I need cash so I can make more titles. Hopefully I'll capture some more people during this war and we'll be able to ransom them for more cash, in addition to the land I intend on acquiring. Uh, Brittany thinks he's clever. He's going to try and march into Normandy. And while I feel confident in defeating him, since I've got more than twice as many troops, I don't want him besieging any of uh, my vassal's castles up there if I can decisively beat him in a battle and just initiate my own sieges. Uh, it, it plays differently if you're uh, much more powerful than your enemy than if you're at sort of a parity of military strength. You'll notice the grayness off the side of the map there. Uh, the, the, the game's map looks like it was designed to be like a, a, a paper map on a table where it has a, a, a border at the edge of it. Uh, it does mean, however, that I can move the camera around uh, wherever I really want to, and I can zoom out pretty far without a problem, even if it does look a little goofy. Now, I should have earned a significant amount of war score, and yes, I did, for that battle, but uh, the Duchess of Brittany is not ready to surrender yet. She would all take a white piece, but she ain't going to get one. I do have some cash. Let's make another duchy. Yay! I already know who I'm going to give that to. I'll give it to this guy. I had hoped to confiscate the lands of Toulouse first, because the duchy I just gave him actually has one county to the south, but I can't take the tyranny hit, and I really want to get my uh, situation sorted out with, uh, without going too much further into the game. Alright, the Siege of Nantes is done. Let's see if she'll take a treaty. Nope, she's not interested, so I'm going to have to continue to besiege that area. Notice that there's not a lot that she can do at this point unless one of my vassals or revolts or unless somebody else attacks me. Uh, but regardless of how much military strength I do have, I can't just conquer willy-nilly. I can only attack and conquer 
the territory I have a claim on. Although if she refrains from giving me what I want for too long, I'll occupy the whole duchy and loot it and pillage it. Well, if the siege... Okay, finally the siege is done. Let's see if she'll take the peace treaty now. Alright, yeah, she's had it. She's had enough. She's gonna give it to me. Still have to wait for her to reply, though. Yay! Alright. Now that's gonna put me over the, the limit for personal holdings. I'm gonna march my troops somewhere and disband them. Now, uh, you'll notice the the imprisonment indicator's been floating around up on my interface for a while, and that's because somebody needs to be, uh, I, or I have, not needs to be, but I have the a legitimate reason to imprison somebody. I've also just noticed that uh, a piece of France got inherited outside of the kingdom uh, while I wasn't paying attention. Uh, if your crown laws are not high enough, that just can happen sometimes. You don't get a claim or anything, because it was a legitimate inheritance. However, this guy who revolted against me previously, I'm gonna see if I can throw him in prison. Nope. He's gone to revolt, except this time I have several thousand troops to throw at him. And we are going to forcibly incarcerate him, and then I am going to seize his lands next, because they comprise a part of an area that I want to have personal holdings in. Now, while we're at war here, I'm going to switch to du jour duchy mode. You're going to see why I'm taking this guy out. Uh, in addition to the fact that he betrayed me before, he owns two counties that belong to two different du jour duchies. Uh, once I crush him and confiscate his real estate, uh, I can give part of it to the duchy of Normandy where it belongs, and I can hold on to the rest of it for myself. That will make the Duke of Normandy happy with me, and I'll fatten up my own holdings a little bit. All right, looks like he's thrown in the towel. He's done, and he knows he's done. Yeah, throw him in jail. You'll notice the Duke of Toulouse is no longer in prison. That's because he died in prison and his son took over. Um, that's going to deny me the opportunity to break up the Duchy of Toulouse for right now. But the current Duke of Toulouse is fairly loyal, so you know I can deal with that later. All right, banished, took him out, gave me some cash, he gave me some land. Let's see what we can do with all that. Yeah, let's go ahead and create the Duchy of Orleans. Uh, that'll work. We're going to get that away. I'm not sure who I'm going to give that away to just yet, but we're going to give that away. Oh, and we're going to give uh, that stray county to him. That'll make him happier. This divide-and-conquer strategy can be effective as long as you pace yourself adequately. Because you'll notice that the Duke of Normandy wasn't happy with me because I've been acting in a tyrannical fashion, but I cut him a piece of the pie from what I just uh, confiscated, so that made him happier. Yeah, he's not happy, but... If I make him the, a duke, he'll be happy enough, especially if I give him all the land that goes underneath the duchy. Yeah, making him the duke and giving him the associated lands gives him a hundred rela relations with me, making him incredibly loyal. And that last little bit of prestige pushed me over the limit. I am now exalted among men. It took about ten years to do it, but King Philippe is sitting at the top of the pecking order. And he's a strong French king now, and not just some weak, wimpy guy that his vassals pick on.
I don't know if you saw it from the tooltips, but becoming exalted among men makes you much more popular among your vassals because they do respect prestige and power. Uh, it won't last forever, but uh, my position is a heck of a lot stronger now than it was previously. However, being exalted among men is not enough to make the Duchess of Brittany want to become my vassal, which is disappointing because as much fun as it is conquering Brittany, I'd like to just add the whole thing to France if possible. It's not going to happen. Part of the reason is that the AI treats cultural differences uh, very seriously, and the ruler of Brittany is Breton in culture, and I'm Frankish in culture, and so she has, wants nothing to do with me. But there may be the opportunity for a war. I can press a ducal claim on that stray little county that got inherited away. The reason is because the guy who inherited that county, he is a vassal of the Roman Empire, but he's currently in revolt against his liege, which means I can march several thousand troops into his land, and the German emperor will not do anything to help his former vassal out. This is why you have to be nice to your liege, and you should carefully uh, consider whether you should be independent or not. Uh, without his liege's protection, there's nothing stopping me from uh, attacking him. It's also nice to finally get into my second non-vassal-related war uh, of this game. Uh, I've been at war a lot, but I've only this is the only second war I fought against somebody who's not a part of France. But even though we're at war, we still have to wrestle with kids who want to know where babies come from. Uh, I've taken a, my, I've made my ruler take a personal interest in raising his daughter, um, uh, and that didn't work out as I hoped. Every time you make, uh, you respond to a child's behavior, it has a chance of applying traits to the child. Uh, this is how they develop personalities in the game. But the percent chance of a child getting a specific trait is usually not 100%. So, you know, you may take a course of action with a child, and sometimes it'll affect them in one way, and sometimes it'll affect them in another way. Uh, I shouldn't worry about it too much, though. My current inheritance laws don't allow, don't allow girls to inherit anyway. So unless I crank out another son here, um, my brother, who's younger than me, will inherit the throne after I die. And I haven't looked at it in the Let's Play recently, but I know he's got kids. That army might seem like a kind of a, a big doom stack, but in Western Europe, uh, the land can usually support armies of up to around 10,000 or even 20,000 troops in a single county. An army this size probably would perform much worse in a desert area or a mountainous region. But yeah, I'm not fighting there. I'm fighting in a place where I can, uh, you know, forage effectively. So the support limit for the army is much higher. Yeah, as expected, we were able to defeat him very easily. I gain prestige. Uh, for helping my vassal press that claim because that wasn't my claim that was the the Duke's claim that I was pressing and Anytime you press your vassal or courtiers claims it also makes them happier with you because obviously I mean you're doing your job as your liege by helping them out uh, It makes perfect sense Since I'm France I kind of got to monitor what's going on to the south of me um, because sometimes the Reconquista is successful early, sometimes the wars between the Christians and the Muslims in that part of the world drag on indefinitely, and sometimes the Christians lose, and instead of having Christians at my southern border, I have non-Christians at my southern border, and that of course changes the foreign policy dynamic significantly. That's my brother, and I wish he wouldn't plot against my other vassals. I mean, we really have other things we need to be doing. Um, and while I know the charges are false, that particular bishop doesn't like me very much, so I'm going to go ahead and 
uh, use the fake evidence to imprison him. It's not just, but it's it's politically expedient. Because I'd rather imprison a bishop that doesn't like me than risk angering a brother of mine who I've made a duke. Now that I've actually created all the titles it is possible for me to create, I can spend money on improving my holdings. And under the current rules of the game, I prefer to upgrade uh, walls and palisades in castles first. The reason is because every time you upgrade uh, walls and palisades, the levy increases by a little bit, the tax income increases by a little bit, and its fortification level increases by a little bit. The other upgrades in castles affect either troops directly or income directly or fortifications directly. Uh, by upgrading palisades, a little bit of each and make the entire holding more progressively useful. Also, the walls and palisades upgrade is a prerequisite for certain higher level built buildings of other kinds. So if I just build all of those upgrades first, I have freedom to build other buildings in the province uh, in any way that I want. If I was desperate for just income, I might focus on castle villages for more income. And if I was just, you know, Cathars, great. Just what I needed, heresy in my realm. Ugh. Anyway, if I was desperate for income, I would do villages first, and if I was desperate for bigger levies, I would do uh, training grounds and uh, troop buildings instead. Since I've been spending so much time fighting my own vassals and trying to consolidate power into the hands of the crown, I, I think now is the time to sit back, relax, and, and spend some time upgrading my own holdings. Uh, I don't have any more claims I can press in Brittany right now. I'm waiting on my chancellor to, to build some. Uh, I've gotten what I've been able to out of the revolting vassals in the Empire, but I can't just willy-nilly declare war on the entire Holy Roman Empire because they have much more military strength than I do. That would just be stupid. So, you know, maybe it's time to educate some kids, see if I can arrange any marriages, uh, build holdings, build buildings, and see what we can do to consolidate my position further without, you know, killing more French soldiers, fighting other French soldiers because my vassals are at war with me. Yes, I just sent her to my wife's court to get educated by my wife. Uh, since she's a ruler in her own right, she's not at home with me and able to do that sort of thing. I have to engage with it as a diplomatic action since she rules her own lands. She could have said no. Unfortunately, while I would like some time and peace in my realm, my vassals are picking their own private little fights right now. I haven't been able to raise my crown authority up high enough to prevent... Uh, that wars between vassals and so they get permission to fight their own private little wars and I can't intervene in them however while my vassals are getting uh, fighting their little private war uh, the situation in the Empire has gotten even worse you'll notice that uh, it's collapsed completely the Emperor is at war with many of his vassals. I'm not sure how this happened, although I suspect a succession went badly. I can now exercise claims on behalf of my vassals if I am so inclined. And that's what we're going to do. While I initially didn't want to go to war with the Empire, if it's in pieces like it is now, this is our chance to put the grab on some, t uh, put some, put the grab on some real estate.
look at how strong my armies are now. If you remember all the way back ten years ago when I first started the game and I tried to raise my levies, they were very, very, very tiny. Uh, they're much stronger now because my vassals are more loyal, and in many cases we've had a chance to replenish depleted levies. Uh, we're going to invade along, I think, two different axes against the Empire. Uh, he might still be able to send considerable military strength against me, although I suspect that his hands are pretty much full elsewhere. It's actually too bad I don't have a claim on the, the throne of the Empire itself, because it might be a good time to exercise it. But I don't have a claim, so I can't do anything about that. I can watch the progress of the siege, but I also uh, will sometimes use the button on the interface to swap between the siege view and province view uh, in case there's any information about the province I want to see. Since there's no real major threats at the moment, I'm browsing around to vassals and allies and seeing uh, how they're doing. Uh, my wife hasn't been called into this war, but that's because she's already at war with the Emperor anyway. Uh, she's fighting her own independent war, so I can't ask her to join this war. I don't have to either. Her, her armies are busy, have been fighting him for years. I actually particularly like this track of music from the game, although it, it has a haunting quality that I'm, I'm not sure is appropriate with my imperialistic aggression with the against the Holy Roman Empire. It still sounds good, though. The good news is all of these unopposed sieges are netting me some uh, extra cash. Oh, and I just got some extra cash from my steward. Yay. Uh, but the bad news is that since I have my personal letters, those cost money to maintain, too. So, you can't really use sieges and looting to finance uh, your realm unless you can use troops that are cheaper than the amount of money you're uh, you're getting from looting and pillaging. However, prisoners are fairly valuable. Now at least the Pope is still moderately happy with me. That's always a good sign. And looking at my succession, you can see that my brother is, in, is my direct heir, and those two young boys aren't my kids, those are his kids. So, you know, the succession is fine, even though I can't seem to generate a son to save my life. Uh, it just means that if I don't have a son, then Tuscany can't be joined to France, and that will make me kind of sad, but there's nothing I can do about it. I love the artwork on this event, it's, it's, and the choices are awesome, too. Um, however, being cruel is generally counterproductive to someone who wants vassals to be happy. I'd rather be kind, even if being kind carries with it some other consequences.
despite the fact that I outnumber these garrisons by more than a factor of 10, I'm not using the option to assault. And the version of the game that I filmed this under, uh, even having 10 to 1 odds on a defending garrison, uh, made ass assaulting was still a bloody ugly affair. In more recent patches, if you outnumber the enemy by that much, uh, you can expect to get somewhat better results. But you can tell that they haven't. Germany hasn't sent any armies against me anyway. I'm sieging completely unopposed, so it's it's not like I'm in a hurry. I don't have to trade uh, so, uh, lives for time. I can just sit back, relax, sip a refreshing beverage, and continue my sieges until someone gives up. Actually, if he would send some armies against me, I might be able to generate extra war score via winning battles. But we'll I'll just keep sieging. I'm nothing else to do about it. Now this is what I get for sending my steward to try and generate extra taxes in my holdings. It's hey, the, the peasants will sometimes kill your steward. Uh, I'll, Luckily, I have other people who are also competent at that task. I'm dead! I have died. And I have, my brother has taken over the throne from me. You'll notice that uh, my brother's sons get claims on the titles because they were uh, in line for succession too. But uh, the time of greatness has passed. Felipe did get his uh, goal accomplished before he died. It took ten years for him to become Felipe the Great. And I was able to centralize power into the hands of the monarchy. I didn't achieve everything I wanted to, though. I wasn't able to break up to lose. And uh, because of the Pope asking for me to change to papal investiture, I wasn't able to increase crown authority. Still, I've got centuries to finish achieving uh, goals I've sort of set out for myself. You know, the point of Crusader Kings is not to do everything in one reign. Uh, the point is to continue to do progressively better uh, until the game ends. And I think I think this particular game I've made a good start. Now, I, I haven't made a recording of it because I don't have uh, 100 hours this week to do voiceovers for 40 hours of gameplay, but I did play this game all the way to the uh, 14th century. And I can tell you that uh, France does fairly well. Uh, the Christians of Iberia are completely conquered, and so France's contributions to the Crusades uh, are not going to the Holy Land and fighting, but are defending her southern borders and advancing back into what is today Spain. Uh, I end up losing this game, though. I'm going to be honest with my my viewers and say that I do lose the game at, at some point. A uh, couple centuries down the road, my ruler ends up being incompetent, the session goes badly, and he gets excommunicated all within two months of taking the throne. Because of all of those factors, uh, all of my vassals jumped ship, uh, refused to pay homage to me, and one of my vassals did have a claim on the title King of France, and he made good on it. Um, the results were pretty ugly, and while I didn't have to... I didn't actually lose to the point where I had no titles, I, I lost so badly I was no longer an important player in political affairs at all. It was pretty bad. But that's part of the uh, uh, attraction of the game. 
to me at least, is that uh, there's there's almost no such thing as I'm so powerful I can't lose because all it takes is an idiot ruler, a bad succession, and an excommunication. You could be right back to square one. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch my Let's Play of Crusader Kings 2. Uh, please come to Adrenaline Vault and check out all of our game previews, game reviews, and game news. Uh, I will have a review of this game posted once we get a review copy. I'll let you know how the actual game, when it's finally done, looks and how it plays. Uh, until then, uh, y'all have fun, keep gaming, and I'll see all of y'all later. And of course, feel free to post comments at either uh, Adrenaline Vault or anywhere else that you catch me and happen to see me. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions I can about the game.